everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am feeling much better. I am now back on track to make videos. Welcome back to my channel on this Sunday morning, afternoon or evening across the world where you may be at. And today I'm going to be talking about autism and online dating. This is a topic that's been brought to my attention uh, in the comments and also in a few private messages. And I thought it would be good to discuss it from my autistic perspective as an autistic woman. Um, I've got a few pointers that I want to talk through today, so I hope you enjoy. Number one, autism and consent. This is a very, 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 very important topic when it comes to dating because autism and consent can be very misleading, especially if you are more on the severer end of the spectrum or on the high functioning end of the spectrum. Um, when you are potentially starting to date online, it can be the barriers of knowing true good intent towards autistic people and not good, con not good consent and good intentions towards autistic people. So consent has to be a very, very, very first crucial thing that we talk about because if you are going to be dating and you want to find your life partner or your girlfriend, boyfriend or just a friend, you know, you have to remember consent and boundaries. So we have to make sure that that area is not crossed. And number two, remember each autistic person you may meet online is different. We all have different needs, severities, levels, traits of the autistic spectrum. So not all autistic people will be the same. Um, three, not all autistic people want romantic relationships. Some people just want a friendship online with you. They just want someone to talk to so they feel less alone and less isolated in their real life. Number three, when a autistic person may go on a date, there are several things that you need to consider. Number one, meet in a public place that has lots of people, bright lights, somewhere that is central so you both can get there. Plan your travel ahead of time, how to get there and how you're going to get back. So that means whether that's a bus, a taxi, train, walking, you know, make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get there and to get back. Write down some questions to ask the person ahead of time. So write down some questions maybe about their special interests or hobbies or questions you want to know about them, but make sure they are accurate, formal, make sure they don't cross personal lines or personal boundaries. So make sure that they are questions that you feel comfortable to answer yourself or to ask other people within your social circles. Tell trusted friends and family where you're going, what time you aim to go out, what time you aim to get back because then they know where you're going and why. Make sure that you give yourself plenty of safety precautions to, you know, to look after yourself. Be truthful about yourself. If you're going to set an online dating profile up, make sure you are going to be truthful about who you are, put about your autism or any form of disability you may have so that the person knows that when they are meeting you, you do have some form of disability or some form of mental health issue because they may then decide if you are not going to be truthful, they may decide not to pursue the friendship or the next date with you because you'd lied about something on the um, profile. So make sure that... Also, autistic people may have certain preferences to people who they want to date. So they may have preferences based on religion, eye colour, hair colour, height. You know, they may pick certain people because they want certain preferences so please don't be offended if they don't select you on their search on their dating profile their dating searches because they are looking for a certain person of a certain height certain eye color hair color religion political preference disability preference etc so that'd be something else that you may want to consider when looking into dating someone with a disability um there are certain topics that we need to make sure we are doing to be safe such as, like I said earlier about consent and abuse. A lot of people with autism who set up their online dating accounts may not realise that some people are not genuinely interested in their best welfare or their best interests. They are there just to abuse them and take the mickey and be rude and to try and scam them or frighten them or harm them. So again, we have to make sure that that abuse 
is talked about ahead of time or when you're going to meet somebody take somebody with you just to make sure that you know you're not completely left by yourself or that if something does happen or you start to feel unsafe at any time you can make an excuse to leave or code word to leave and then that person knows that they've crossed the boundaries with you also with regards to how much you contact the person online before time so whether that's facebook instagram social media emails telephone text message phone calls make sure that you don't cross the personal boundaries it can come across as being clingy demanding codependent like you know it can come across that you're being just really quite agitating and quite annoying um, also again it can be a sensory overload issue if you are going to contact someone with autism or any any kind of physical mental health issues you have to make sure you don't overload them with too much information because again that can cause withdrawals that can cause lack of communication that can cause both people to then withdraw from the conversation or pursuing the friendship relationship any further because there's been a mismatch of information and communication on both sides also when they go out on a date you may realize that people with autism may not give you full eye contact so like you see me like looking around or like, i may look up and down because i find it very hard to give constant eye contact to people who are looking at me or expect me to be like staring at them and i feel like i'm invading their personal space their personal preference boundaries so again don't expect that also, I want to talk about sensory issues with regards to online dating because when you get into a relationship or you start meeting up with people for dates and they may go to shake your hand or they may go to hug you or, you know, they may say, oh, like, you smell nice and, like, they may try and, like, smell your, like, cologne, perfume, aftershave or they may have something that's highly centred on themselves and it can cause a real big sensory overwhelm of anxiety and panic. So again, if you are going on a date with an autistic person or a person with disability or a mental health issue, make sure you don't wear things that are high centred, like per perfumes, colognes, aftershaves, because it can cause physical anxiety to the fact they don't want to touch you or come in. They may withdraw and be like, nope, because of the smell of the aftershave or the cologne on you. Um, also don't go to hug somebody or go to put out your hand because they may think oh i don't like being hugged i don't like touching hands with people you know just be very very careful of the personal boundaries that you are going to meet that person if they kind of withdraw or you really they kind of pull away like this it's not because they're trying to be awkward they are just uncomfortable they are anxious they don't like being touched or hugged or you know having their personal space interfered with so just be very very mindful on that also when you start getting more personal towards a person as well like asking like inappropriate questions that is a really red flag for me i personally don't choose to date i don't want to date i'm not interested in dating i am somebody that identifies as an asexual which basically means i don't want sexual relationship i don't want to be in a sexual relationship or have sexual needs i'm someone that is very happy being single being independent doing what i want to do and you know i have a lot of friends you know who are autistic i have a lot of friends who are neurotypical so you know i'm able to communicate with both sides of the relationship side of things but for me i just choose not to date but if you are going to date i hope that these tips tricks have helped you and i'll see you on the next video bye guys